Good morning. Let me be the first to welcome you to the start of a new academic year, our 149th. I've been here for the majority of those. This is always an exciting time. Campus is alive. It's vibrant and it's full of what makes a university campus a university campus. And that's our faculty, our staff, and certainly our students. This year we welcome our returning students back and we embrace students who are new to Alderson Broadus University as they join our university community. Our opening convocation is an official welcoming ceremony where we gather as individuals but depart united. We celebrate our diversity as we acknowledge and welcome those from across the country and from around the world. We rejoice in having new students, faculty, and staff on our campus. This is the participative part of the ceremony. If, you're, if this is your first year on campus, either as a student, faculty, or staff, I invite you to stand and be welcomed by those of us who call AB home. All you newbies, stand, please. Thank you. And if you're a returning student, faculty, or staff, I ask you to stand and be recognized for your continuing commitment to AB as a place of quality education, service, and learning. Don't sit down. Stay standing. And join in the singing of God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, White with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Hello, my fellow battlers. My name is Mary Griffith, and I am your SGA president for the 2019-2020 academic year. Our opening convocation demonstrates... <laughs> <laughs> ...demonstrates our appreciation and respect for the diversity on our campus. Students from across America and around the world come together to fulfill the mission of AB by achieving the higher quality education. Our flag ceremony represents all the wonderful states, countries, and nations that are here within our wonderful institution today. This year, the students are hailing from 35 states and 19 countries. As each of the flags is brought into the chapel, I invite you to celebrate our diversity and put your hands together as we begin this year with the Parade of Flags. Thank you. Please welcome the students of Arizona. Please welcome the students of California.
please welcome the students of Colorado. Please welcome the students from Connecticut. Please welcome the students of Delaware. Please welcome the students from the District of Columbia. Please welcome the students of Florida. Please welcome the students from Georgia. Please welcome the students from Idaho. Please welcome the students from Illinois. Please welcome the students of Indiana. Please welcome the students of Kentucky. Please welcome the students of Louisiana. Please welcome the students from Maryland. Please welcome the students of Massachusetts. Please welcome the students of Michigan. Please welcome the students of Missouri. Please welcome the students from Nevada. Please welcome the students of New Hampshire. Please welcome the students of New Jersey. Please welcome the students of New York. Please welcome the students from North Carolina. Please welcome the students from Ohio. Please welcome the students from Oklahoma. Please welcome the students from Oregon. Please welcome the students from Pennsylvania. Please welcome the students from South Carolina. Please welcome the students from Tennessee. Welcome the students from Texas. Please welcome the students from Utah. Please welcome the students of Virginia. Please welcome the students of Washington. Please welcome the students from Wyoming. Please welcome the students from Wisconsin. Please welcome students from Brazil. Please welcome the students from Barbados. Please welcome the students from Canada. Welcome students from Germany.
Please welcome the students from Israel. Please welcome students from Italy. Please welcome the students from Kenya. Welcome students from Libya. Please welcome the students from Malta. Please welcome the students from Mexico. Please welcome the students of New Zealand. Please welcome all students from the Philippines. Please welcome the students from Puerto Rico. Please welcome students from Spain. Please welcome the students from Tunisia. Please welcome students from Saudi Arabia. Please welcome the students from Scotland. Please welcome the students from West Virginia. Please welcome students from the UK. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. My child, if you accept my word and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, if you indeed cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as a hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk blamelessly, guarding the paths of justice and preserving the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equality, every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pre pleasant to your soul. 
Prudence will watch over you, and understanding will guard you. For once in my life, I can raise the microphone. I'm very proud of that. Well, good morning, and I join Dr. Probst in welcoming you to this auspicious occasion. It's a sacred ceremony, the beginning of our 149th academic year, where we celebrate our heritage, our lineage, and our legacy and responsibility as an academic community. Other than baccalaureate, this is the only time that we symbolically bring students and faculty together en masse to celebrate, to celebrate community and family togetherness. The mission of Alderson Broadus University is to provide our students 
with the highest quality education. Striving, and that's the key verb, striving to prepare our students to succeed in whatever you want to do, your chosen disciplines. And to fulfill your roles in a diverse society, which we truly are, as well-rounded and responsible citizens. So today we celebrate scholarship. We meet as one, learners and teachers, scholars and those that provide knowledge. The transfer of knowledge is a sacred thing. It's full of hope, it's full of truth, it is full of a, a toolbox of assorted skills and things that we're going to need. Central to this exercise is the role of teacher. And I've said on many occasions, each one of us has a hall of fame. Each one of us has heroes that we remember, we emulate, we try to become. So if I gave each one of you a building, which would be a hall of fame, dedicated to you, I bet one of the first busts in your hall of fame or plaque would be a teacher. I can tell you with all assurance that I wouldn't be here without my third grade teacher. And I pray for her every day. She's long gone. And those lessons of diligence and hard work, of sticking to a blackboard when you're a little kid, I remember to this day and I thank, I thank her so much. So what is a teacher? One who mentors and mentors well. One who guides in word, action, and deed. A role model of decorum and caring. Someone we'd like to be like. So today, Betsy McComas is that teacher we're going to be listening to. I'm going to quote from one of her nominations, and it shows how she exemplifies the best in being a teacher. I quote, her amazing teacher skills, teaching skills, are part of the reasons that I decided to minor in accounting. I personally believe that I have learned more from her than anyone else. She challenges us and pushes us to be better. What a compliment. What a compliment. So for the purpose of this presentation and this academic convocation, I present Betsy McComas. me while I readjust things. Um, thank you for that. That was nice. Um, it was a great honor to be named faculty member of the year. No doubt about it. Until I remembered today. <laughs> they said, oh, by the way, we forgot to tell you, as if I didn't already know. So I was trying to figure out what to talk about. Now, I'm an accounting teacher. So my first thought was, well, we'll discuss the new federal laws dealing with income taxes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought too. Um, so I looked around and decided, okay, what do I know besides accounting that might be a little more entertaining, but still help you learn something? And I looked and saw my children. So this is lessons from my children. Um, and it's things they have taught me and hopefully will help you get through the academic year um, and through life. And while this is primarily for the students, the rest of you feel free to listen also. That's fine. Um, now, the first thing I have to do is get into my mommy outfit. So if you would just excuse me a minute. Thank 
kids. <laughs> there are, wait guys, I gotta get this done because everybody told me I have to be short. There's three dogs here. There's two pugs and a part pug, okay? Now, in case, this is just a little trivia for you. In case you're ever on Jeopardy or you want to play trivia down at Wanderlust, a group of pugs is called a grumble. You're welcome for that information. <laughs> so I'm going to introduce my dogs individually because every mother takes every opportunity to show pictures of her kids. And you all are stuck here and have to look at my kids. I'm sorry, but we're going to do it anyway. This is Miss Molly. Miss Molly is, I've had her about 10 and a half years. And if you notice, she and I seem to have the same kind of hair. Um, she is my alpha dog, but she's also my mama dog. She is the one that will come if there is a hurt or if you're upset and comfort you. But at the same time, if she thinks the others are not behaving, she will not hesitate to whoop him up the side of the head with her paw. Well, ah, this is Miss Dudley. I've had, I got her about a month after we got Molly. Um, if you wonder where she got her name, I don't have time for that today. Come see me, I'll tell you. It's kind of a long story. Um, but Dudley is our princess. What Dudley wants, Dudley gets. For me, from the other two dogs, it doesn't matter. She's a princess. She knows it. She works it. I don't know what I'm supposed to point out to get these things to move. Straight up? That way? Okay. Aww. <laughs> I'll tell him he got the biggest aww. <laughs> this is Toby. Toby is my rescue. He is 13 or 14 years old. This is an older picture of him when he was a little more spry. Um, I've had him about six years. Um, he is part pug. He's what I call a pug wannabe. Um, but he is pug enough for me. Um, and he is, he's a great kid. Um, he had a hard life, so he likes his comforts. He loves doggy beds that are nice and cushy. He loves food, any kind of food, it doesn't matter. Um, and the one thing I will tell you, if you ever have dogs, you never have to pick food up off the floor ever again. So there are benefits. Um, so let me... Let me talk about what I have learned from my pugs over the years, and my pug wannabe, and other dogs I've had during my lifetime. First off, let's talk about friends. Now, some of these pictures I stole off the internet, okay? I'm just, I'm just telling you. <laughs> I gotta be real here. Friends are important. We all know that, right? You gotta have friends. Um, they help you through the dark times. They help you, you know, they laugh with you. They cry with you. Um, but let me stress that we also need to make sure we get friends that we might not normally meet. Um, people outside of our sport team or our major or our background, go out and try and make friends that are different from you. You can learn a lot from friends. Um, I found a quote from Anais Nin that said, each friend represents a world in us a world possibly not born until they arrive, and it's only by this meeting that a new world is born. Now, I will tell you that I don't recommend that you greet new friends the way pugs do. Um, I think it's not really sociably acceptable, um, except among pugs. So I think a handshake or a fist bump or just, hey, how you doing, will work. My next recommendation is to occasionally disconnect. What do I mean by that? Turn your cell phone off, put it away. Um, and how I found this from my dogs is dogs live in the moment. Um, they appreciate each day, um, and many of us don't. And I really think it's because we are so tied in to these cell phones that your world is a five or six inch screen. And we all need to get beyond that. We need to put it down and enjoy life for a while. What do I mean by that? Well, it's whatever you want to do. But it's things like 
have a conversation with somebody and actually look in their eyes. Don't be looking at a screen. Look in their eyes. Read a book that's not assigned. <laughs> sit, qu <laughs> sit quietly and just be. Um, from what I hear, Dr. Barry and his wife have, put, have donated the blue chairs that seem to be popping up around campus. Go sit down, just enjoy nature. Take a walk, listen to birds sing. Just give your brain a rest from, from this. The next thing my dogs have taught me, oh yeah, sit, I forgot that one. That's my, she really did that on her own. You can stop and smell the flowers. My, my next kind of lesson is patience. Um, according to dictionary.com, patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble or suffering without getting angry or upset. Um, my grumble has taught me patience. If you've ever tried to housebreak a pug, you will understand patience. They are stubborn and don't like to do that. Um, but they also demonstrate patience every day. When I go to work and the last thing I always say to them as I'm going out the door is I tell them goodbye because they're my kids, and I tell them I'm going out to make kibble money. And they lie there and they take a nap. When I grade, they sit quietly and wait for me to get done because they know by delaying their satisfaction or what they want, they're going to get lots of belly rubs and probably some treats. <laughs> um, so people need to learn to be more patient although belly rubs may be optional for you all. Um, patience is also known um, to make one healthier, be more empathetic to the rest of the world, and to develop, develop a more positive attitude. It makes you see the world as a better place. Now, developing patience is not easy. I have developed patience over the years, um, but some things you can do to help you develop patience now are one, um, is learn to tell the important things from the unimportant things. If it's not going to matter tomorrow or a week from now or a year from now, it's not important. And you shouldn't get all stressed about it. Um, so you need to learn to tell the difference. Two, um, be mindful of things that make you impatient. We all have them. They're triggers. Try and keep away from those triggers or learn when they're coming Take a deep breath and just wait it out. If necessary, take 12 or 13 deep breaths. Oxygen's good for you. My next one, I couldn't find a pug picture. I apologize. That's a nice picture, but no pug. Um, but my pugs have taught me kindness. Um, they're kind all creatures. They like children. They like strangers probably too much. They like other dogs. It doesn't matter. Um, and we personally and as a society need to practice more kindness. The world needs kindness. And I know I see it on TV. Um, there's all kinds of things on, on um, the Internet. Um, but you have to practice kindness. Hold a door for someone. Help someone carry a load. Just sit and talk to somebody that looks lonely or seems to be hurting. Um, as the world famous philosopher Jackie Chan said, um, sometimes it only takes one act of kindness and caring to change a person's life. Now, your words can, can be hurtful. Um, and you need to learn to think before you speak sometimes. Um, words can be a sword or it can be a hug. And even if you have to criticize someone, you can do it in such a way that you're not stabbing them. So you need to learn to use words that give hugs rather than pain. Lastly, being kind includes to yourself. We all need to be kind to ourselves. Now that means things that you know. Eat right, exercise, um, get plenty of sleep. But it's also learning to forgive yourself. A lot of us have things we've done in the past that we're not particularly proud of. But self-kindness is learning to let those go. 
learn a lesson from it, and just let it go. And I know that can be difficult, but it is necessary. So thank you for this opportunity. Um, I do have one more slide. Um, and this one um, I learned from my little buddy, Toby. Please adopt, don't shop. When you rescue a dog or a cat from a shelter, you're saving two lives, the one you took home and the one that can take his place. Thank you. If you will please stand and join us for the singing of the alma mater. Join me in prayer. Lord God, we have begun our journey into another year here on this hilltop. It's a new year in which we look forward with hope and expectation for the ways we'll be changed. May this year be one of learning and growth in our intellectual abilities, in our capacity for compassion and understanding, and in our desire and commitment to serve our students, our colleagues, our friends, and others. May we strive to be kind, to be good listeners, to see value in every person we meet. May we be inspired by traditions and history of Alderson Broadus and have the courage to live out our humanity with purpose in a world that needs our care. May we be a blessing to one another today and always. Amen. Thank you. We'll see you the rest of the day.